Bill Maher and conservatives. The relationship is complicated, to quote Facebook. Now, for years and years, Bill Maher has been a rock rib progressive. We know that, we see that, we hear that. He's even been a cruel progressive. Uh, not too long ago, he made fun of Sarah Palin's family, including her special needs child, comparing them to the Hills Have Eyes mutants. Of course, there was no outrage about that because of the topic in question, but he said it and we heard it. And he's been doing that for many, many years. I think his some of his religious commentary has been a bit on the rough side. He throws a lot of sharp elbows there, but lately he has changed his game. He's actually expanded his audience. He's talked about that when he goes on, on the road now. He's playing to a lot of conservatives in the crowd, not just liberals, not just his own team. So that's Bill Maher today. And yet conservatives still question whether we should rally around him, support him, give him a little bravo and add a boy when he does well, because one day he does that. And the next day he says, Donald Trump is the antichrist and you can't vote for him under any circumstances, even though there's a whole industrial complex dedicated to censoring thought, thanks to the Biden administration. That's where we are today. So what do we do? What do we say? Well, you know, whenever I post about Bill Maher or I write about him, I got a lot of blowback from my fellow conservatives. How could you do this? What's wrong with you? He's not on our side. You don't get the big picture. And yeah, it is complicated. There is some nuance here. Uh, recently, Jason Whitlock from The Blaze talked about the issue directly. He was actually condemning some conservatives who were happy to see some DEI critiques on The Daily Show. That was Charlemagne the God saying, hey, DEI is mostly garbage. <laughs> well, take away the mostly. I think he's pretty darn accurate. And of course, that particular segment had a lot of slams against conservatives because that's how you have to appease your base. But good for Charlemagne for saying what he said. And I think it's good to share the news. Jason Whitlock disagrees. And here's the tweet he mentioned it in. It's pretty scathing. But let's get back to Bill Maher. Now, what Bill Maher does almost on a weekly basis is he attacks the woke mind virus. And yes, that's Elon Musk's term, but I love it. And I use it often and I always try to attribute it to him because he's a pretty powerful guy. He might have some lawyers hanging around, so better be safe than sorry. But what Bill Maher does on his show, and again, this is HBO. This is real time with Bill Maher. And it's a, it's a format where a lot of liberals are watching. I'm sure the vast majority of people are left of center. They've been weaned on Bill Maher's shtick for years. But he hammers the woke nonsense again and again and again. He does it with humor. He does it with facts. He does it with logic and reason. And he does it with a lot of common sense as well. All those things are good. All those things are important. Here, but they do their rampaging on Twitter. Here's a cute example from a couple of years ago. The Banjo player <laughs> from Mumford and Sons tweeted that he liked a book, a book that apparently had not been approved by the revolution. So, of course, he had to delete the tweet, then take time away from the band. Oh, my God, you mean this could have affected Mumford and Sons? <laughs> and then the cringing apology, I have come to better understand the pain caused by the book I endorsed. Pain? from a book, unless he hit the drummer over the head with it. <laughs> but again, he'll also slam Republicans. He'll also attack Donald Trump in ways meant to deflate his vote count for sure. That's what his mission is. He has, he has said exactly that. There's no bones about it. So how do we treat Bill Maher? How do we embrace Bill Maher? If you're right of center or just a, a free thinking soul, what do you, what's your take on him? Are you in the Jason Whitlock camp or is it something else? And for me, <laughs> I have to say, I'm in the something else camp. I just am. We're living in a time where we need nuance. We need context. We need more information, not less. We have to get away from the hot takes. We have to get away from the, this person said this. I don't care what the conversation was about. I don't care about the context. I'm going to condemn him or her because that's what I want to do. That's not always the best answer. And I think Bill Maher is proof of that. And, you know, one of the things that Bill Maher has done so very well, and I don't think gets enough appreciation, is he literally reaches across the aisle. You know, for some hosts, just having someone like Kid Rock on their program would be 
just the worst of the worst. You can't do that because he's a conservative singer. Well, Bill Maher says, you know what? He's interesting. He's thoughtful. He's a little bit wild, a little bit out of control. And I want to have him on my show. And of course, they appeared together on Club Random, which is Bill Maher's signature podcast. But that's not the only case of him reaching across the aisle. I said great conversations with people like Dave Rubin, uh, Sage Steele, who I don't know if she's an actual conservative, but more of a free thinker, more of someone who's willing to buck the progressive narrative when she sees fit. Good for her. Good for Bill Maher for speaking to her. But I think Bill Maher was at his best in a way when he spoke to Riley Gaines. And of course, if you don't know Riley Gaines, she is the collegiate swimmer who was tying a biological male who was a trans female athlete, Leah Thomas, and it got a lot of attention. And since then, Riley Gaines has become an out and out activist for the cause of keeping trans women out of women's sports, both professional and at the collegiate level. So for Bill Maher, a progressive, to not just simply embrace her or agree with her, but to have her on the show, to crack wise, to agree more than they disagreed on certain subjects, it's a powerful statement. And if you don't think so, just dial back the calendar a couple of years. Mark Duplass is a very talented actor, producer, writer. He does a lot of different things. If you don't know his name, you know his face. He was on the league several years ago, one of the key players in that show. And he said something about Ben Shapiro that got a lot of people's attention at the time. This is maybe four or five years ago. He basically said, if you wanted to get the right perspective, listen to Ben Shapiro. You could do worse. He seems like a pretty reasonable guy. Well, the outrage was pretty instantaneous, pretty nasty. And Mark Duplass backpedaled. He said, I am so sorry for saying what I said, for actually reaching across the aisle and being kind to someone like Ben Shapiro. That's where we are in the culture today. So when Bill Maher invites all these people who are not left of center to sit down with him on real time, on Club Random, that does have an impact. That is important. We need more of that. We need less this tribalized fighting and more, hey, let's have a conversation. And if we agree to disagree, all the better. Because sometimes you can change my mind and sometimes I can change yours. Again, good for Bill Maher. But some will still disagree with me. At the end of the day, he's going to vote for every Democrat he sees when it comes to election day. And I don't disagree with that. I think you're absolutely right. And that's a valid critique. But you know what? We're in a culture war. We're in a fight. We're in a fight for free speech. We're in a fight for American values. And we need as big a tent as possible to make that a winning culture war situation. If we don't win, it's ball game. It's game over. We don't want that. So to push aside a Bill Maher, to say, hey, you're not pure enough. You don't agree with everything we say. I think that's a mistake. I think it's a big mistake because at the end of the day, if the minimum wage goes higher or lower, it'll impact people's lives for sure. But if free speech goes away, if we're not allowed to say what we want to say, if this woke mind virus really takes over the way it could, that's that's a problem that we have to avoid at all costs. And if it means embracing someone like Bill Maher and gritting our teeth when he talks about how much he won't vote for Republicans, but he's going to open up many people's minds to what's going on in our culture and how wrong it is and how much we need free speech and how important it is to love thy neighbor, no matter how they vote, no matter what philosophical views they may hold, that matters. So consider me Team Bill Maher. It's not always easy. It's a little uncomfortable at times, but we need folks like Bill Maher. We really do.